Hello, everybody. I'm just trying to see if people can get in here for this live part of the video. And I'm going to talk a bit about... There we go. Okay, I think we're live now. Hey, everybody. It's Cameron here. And I think we're live. It looks like we are. Just going to see if anybody comes in here. Um, and I can respond to comments when people get in here. Um, but I wanted to talk about what is a cult, all right? Because we have uh, so many times where that that word is thrown around and it's used, you know, in society generally to label things and so forth. And everybody has an opinion about whether something is a cult or not. Um, but I wanted to talk about how that applies to the context of what I'm doing, what we're doing with TechnoTutor, with Destiny, with Jen, um, how that word is, one, used in a way to prevent others from investigating something, two, used by people to, in fact, create their own cult following. And I'll explain that later. And three, um, how, in fact, there's nothing wrong with something being a cult. And you can't escape something being a cult. Uh, so we'll kind of go into some of those things. I don't really have a specific you know, plan other than those three points to cover. So if I see comments uh, in here, then I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, but basically, when you look at the word cult, Okay, I mean, you can go and read the dictionary definition. There's different definitions. Um, there's different aspects of the definition, but I mean, there's also, you know, in terms of what dictionary you use, there's different definitions. Some of them may be similar, some of them may be very different and so forth. But if you look at the root of that word cult, or the word itself cult, it forms the root of the word culture, right? And so um, when people use the word cult, though, like, well, Obviously, I can't ask you to give me an answer because you're just listening or watching, but I want you to do this for yourself. What is your, I want you to answer this question. What is your definition of a cult? Or how do you feel when that word is used? Okay. Um, does it elicit any kind of emotional responses? Does it create any sort of fear or uh, negativity or any, any bad feelings or anything within you? And for example, how would you feel if somebody said that you were in a cult? So let's say, for example, um, you, uh, let's say you join a business and you're telling people about this business, like an MLM or something like that. And then someone comes to you uh, or you go to somebody and you're presenting what you're doing, explaining to them and you're really excited about it. And they say, wow, you know, I heard from somebody that this is just a cult, right? Why would somebody say that? Okay. Can you see how the person saying it might be saying it because someone told them now they're afraid that they're going to be in a cult, but why would somebody else say that to them? Why would somebody else label something like that? So obviously from that perspective, you can see it's used in a way to try to get people to not look at something, to just reject it outright without even considering it. Now, does that automatically imply anything that's labeled as a cult? is something that everyone should do. No, of course not. Um, but just labeling something that in itself doesn't change anything, doesn't mean anything. It's just one person's opinion. It's like, for example, uh, nothing to do with business or anything. Let's say you have uh, somebody who you're trying to get to know and you're going up to them, you know, you're starting a conversation or whatever, and they're like, hey, so-and-so told me you're a real asshole. I don't want to talk to you. That person, who maybe they said they don't know you, they've already formed an opinion because of what somebody else said. Like they use the word asshole. And so in their mind, they're like, this person's a jerk. They're going to try to dominate me. They're going to make me feel bad. Whatever it is, they've already created an idea about you based on their definition of that word. And why did that other person use that word? Because they wanted to create that negative feeling within the person that they were telling that information to. So this is, this is in a large sense how that word cult is used in the context of our society and so forth and in terms of um, labeling things as cults. Now, if you go and look at the definition of the word cult, in fact, why don't we just do that? I'm going to pull up, let's see, I'll pull up my Google Chrome since I'm using Firefox for the video. That way I can keep it open there. 
I'm going to put define cult. Okay, that way I can at least just read them for everybody. Um, so you can see it's not just coming from my definition. So this is from Google. So you can just Google it, and that way you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing. So let's take a look at it. It says, a system of religious veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object. A okay, so then the sub-definition of that. So it's within that definition. A relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. Okay, and I'll go back through these and we can look at them. A misplaced or excessive admiration for a particular person or thing. And then also a person or a thing that is popular or fashionable, especially among a particular section of society. And if we look at the, um, the breakdown of it in terms of its origin in Latin and so forth, uh, it comes from French and Latin, the word cultus, which means to worship, and then the word the root cult, uh, which is used in other things, is inhabited, cultivated, or worshipped. All right. So does it mean necessarily something is bad because it is a cult? It doesn't mean necessarily anything bad is happening in it. Or, you know, if it's a group of people, let's say, or a system, um, does that mean something bad is happening? Well, let's go back to the definition. So it said, firstly, a system of religious veneration and devotion toward, directed toward a particular figure or object. So by that definition, religious veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object, by that definition, I would say 90% of all religions are cults. I only say 90% because there's some percentage of them where there's no particular figure or object perhaps that's being um, venerated or, or devotion is being given to. But what it's saying is that if there's a system of religious veneration and devotion, so like a systematic way, so think about it. Uh, let's say you have Jesus, okay, as a perfect example. Jesus is a person, okay, and there's religious devotion towards him, okay? There's admiration of him, okay? I could, for example, say, I appreciate Jesus' message. I appreciate Jesus as who he was and what he represented and what he stood for. Does that mean I'm in a cult? No. Am I following a system of religious veneration and devotion towards him? No, I'm just expressing my admiration of him. Now, if I go to church every day and I pray to Jesus, and I look at pictures of him, and I have pictures of him in my home, and I have a picture in a locket right here, and I always talk about how great Jesus is, and I read these books about him, and I try to get other people to read them. Is that a cult? Is that a system of religious veneration and devotion towards a particular figure or object? I would say it is. Okay. Now, <clears throat> does that mean that it is evil or bad or anything else in itself? No, because that's not necessarily the definition. It's just a system of devotion. Um, but if I look at now the subgroup, a relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. Or sinister. Now it says a, a relatively small group of people. Now again, this is a sub-definition. So there, and then they give it, they give a, uh, um, let's see, a little example of it as a network of satanic worshiping cult or satan worshiping cults but this use of the word is so what that means is since it's a sub-definition doesn't mean that just because uh they have that definition that it means something has to be small to be a cult because the first definition would define virtually any religion or any systematic approach of, of devotion or, or religious veneration towards an object or, or a figure would be considered a cult but then another usage of the word. So for example, if you were Christian, you could define a particular branch of Christianity as a cult. So for example, a, a person who's just Christian, who from the bigger perspective of the word, you could define as they're in a cult, cult of Christianity, that person could then take the sub-definition and say, well, I think Mormonism is a cult. It's a relatively small group comparatively, right? Compared to the billion Christians worldwide, it's relatively small. And it has beliefs and practices that I, as a more general Christian, regard as strange or sinister. Okay, Or you could look at the context of just being a religious person 
and say, I think Satan worship is strange or sinister. Okay, so that could be a cult, someone who, a group of people who worship Satan, let's say. But notice it says regarded by others as strange or sinister. So in the definition, what it's showing you is that the word is something that's applied by people based on them regarding something as strange or sinister. Okay, so for example, let's say you don't know anything about Mormonism and you just think it's weird and strange and sinister. You could say, well, that's a religious cult, but that's your opinion, right? But by definition, since you regard it as strange, it's a cult. No one can say, even in the Mormon faith, no one can say, no, it's not, here's why, blah, 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 blah. It's not. No, it is because someone else regards it as strange or sinister, and it's a relatively small group of people having certain religious beliefs and practices. Relatively small is also a very general term. What is relatively small? If half the world's population does something, is that a relatively small group compared to the whole? I mean, that would be really open to, you see how these definitions, now, just because we define it that way doesn't mean it has to be that way. That's how we've defined the word. So in other words, this definition is showing us how we use the word. It's, it doesn't mean that the word cult has to mean this. It just means that this is how we as human beings have decided to use this word. So here's an example of when it's being used. It's being used towards relatively small groups of people uh, that, again, have religious beliefs or practices that others regard as strange or sinister. Okay. So now let's look at another one. I'm just giving you, I'm just kind of opening the point up, okay? And, okay, just closing up that message I got. A misplaced or excessive admiration of a particular person or thing. Ah, now here's something interesting. That's a sub-definition. There's only really one definition in, according to Google. Again, I'm just using one thing so everyone can easily access the same definition if you want to look at it, right? Um, a, rel uh, where I'm, a misplaced or excessive admiration. So what does it mean that it's misplaced? Okay, so oh, well, let me go back. What, what's an example of this? Just so you can see, like these definitions, it, they may seem abstract when you read it, but the, if you have a high vocabulary, in other, in other words, if these definitions are already integrated, you'll see immediately, oh, yeah, I, I know, that's like when we say this, or that's in that context, right? So for example here, what's an example of when we would might we might use this? Um, you might say like, okay, you could say Trump, for example, has a cult, right? Another, or you could say um, like uh, a musician that I like um, or an artist, uh, Morrissey, right? He's, he has a cult following, right? There's people who just think he's, or like John Lennon or the Beatles. Um, uh, you know, sometimes like, you know, you could think of a, a director like Stanley Kubrick, right? There's like excessive admiration or, or uh of that of that person. Um, now, there's also the next definition. I'm going to come back to the other one in a second. It says a person or thing that's popular or fashionable, especially among a particular section of society. So you might have, for example, this term. It gives a cult film, or they say it's a cult classic. Now, there, there's no implication that the admiration is excessive. They're just saying it's very popular or fashionable among a particular section of society. So. Um, you know, like there's this movie I liked back uh, when I was in college called Primer, and it was a sci-fi sci movie about time travel, um, and it was created by this guy from Dallas who did it for like, I don't know, $15,000 and just taught himself everything about film, and he wrote the music himself. It was a really cool movie, and um, didn't, even though it followed a traditional movie structure, it had like a lot of elements that were, it was just really cool. I really liked it. I watched it many, 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 many times, and then it got a big following, uh, on the internet because people were trying to take apart all the little ins and outs of all the different time travel timelines and it was a very complicated movie from that perspective so it was fun for people who like that kind of stuff and now you may have never heard of it I'm assuming you probably haven't you know depending on who you are right you probably haven't heard of it but it was very it was very popular with a certain group of people if that makes sense meaning I like time travel movies but I don't particularly like um, all time travel movies just as an example, right? So just because it's a time travel movie and there's a group of people who like time travel movies, one movie in particular could be really popular with them, like they all really like it, and some they don't. So um, usually that's what we mean when we say like that, that that's a cult classic or something. We don't mean there's anything negative about it. Um, but when we go back to a misplaced or excessive admiration, if somebody said, 
oh, there's a cult of personality around President Trump or uh, like an artist or something like that, it can kind of have a sort of negative aspect to it because it's saying by definition it's misplaced or excessive admiration. Well, who decides what is excessive, right? Um, somebody might look at, for example, uh, somebody who likes President Trump and say that's excessive, your admiration of him, you think he's so amazing. But then that person could say, well, um, but I really like President Obama. And someone could say, well, I think your admiration is excessive or misplaced. So it's a matter of opinion, right? And if you're a Christian person, you might think that somebody's focus on um, science being the answer to everything is excessive or misplaced, where that person might think your uh, admiration of Jesus or your religion or whatever is excessive. So if you, if we base everything on opinion, then everything by definition can be considered a cult because it's based on a person who's in a way outside of it deciding that it is. If they decide to have a feeling that you know, it fits into any of these categories, then they can label it that way. But is that very useful, right? And so how many times does somebody, now if we go back to the context of why would somebody call a business or a, like a philosophical movement or um, a, a religious movement or something like that, a cult, clearly they're not just saying, oh yeah, it's really popular. Clearly in that sense, the only reason why a person would say that I mean, not the only reason, but generally speaking, is because they're trying to get other people to not adhere to it or to not participate in it, right? And I mean, I know a lot of people have this fear of like their kid grows up, becomes a teenager, and they go and join a cult, and they're just like, oh, my kid joined the cult. It's so terrible and all this stuff, right? I get that. So it's like this fear that's in green with us or like, oh, my friend joined Amway or whatever. And now they're in this cult and all they want to do is sell Amway products or whatever. But the thing is, if you go and you work for like Microsoft or you go work for Apple, you're going to see the same thing. You're going to see people who are obsessive about this thing. They think it's the best thing ever or just people who use Apple products, for example. Like I use pretty much only Apple products, right? Um, but... I don't necessarily have an excessive admiration. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. It would just depend on whether somebody, if somebody else's opinion, whether it's excessive, right? There's no objective standard, right? But if you, if you kind of go back for a moment, a person or thing that is popular or fashionable, especially among a particular section of society, I mean, if you just look at it from that, especially among a particular section of society. Now, if you take that part, it's just especially, so that means it doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to be among a particular uh, section of society, but especially among them. A person or thing that is popular or fashionable. So if you're not, if it's not popular, then it's not a cult. And if it is popular, it's a cult. Because look at it. Let's look at this. Let's, I'm going to pull up this. Define especially. Okay, let me explain something here. Especially, defined in Google as used to single out one person, thing, or situation over all others, to a great extent, very much. So, if you go back, it says, a person or thing that is popular or fashionable, especially among a particular section of society. Okay, they're singling that out? Or are they just saying that, that to a very great extent, would describe that thing? So, if it's a person that's popular or fashionable, and it's particular among a, section, a particular section of society, well, how do you define a particular section? Um, if if one if seventeen percent of believes in Christianity, is that a particular section? So that's a thing, Christianity. That's popular, and it's in amongst a particular section of society. Um, what about shopping at Walmart? That's popular. I don't shop at Walmart. I haven't shopped there in, in like maybe eight or nine years. Okay, I think I might have gone in there once, like within that period, but it's like I don't go there regularly or any, by any means. So there's a section of society, people who don't go to Walmart probably, and some people who do. So is going to Walmart, a, is, is Walmart a cult? It's popular among a section of society, right? So if somebody says something is a cult and you react immediately, what does that imply about your relationship with that word? 
it implies that you have within you to that word, like inside of it, this, this little negative ball of energy, and just, you know, if you want to call it that. And so anytime that word is used, it's like, ooh, you have a definition of that word that is like tainted. Because I just read to you a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm not saying Christianity is a cult, so I can be like, ha ha, they're evil. I'm just saying, according to these definitions, I can use one of them and say, that's a cult. I can say, um, liking Chelsea Football Club is a cult. Or just liking soccer or football or basketball is a cult. Basketball itself is a cult. It's, a, it's an activity. It's a, it's a thing that's popular in a section of society. But would it make sense if I was like, oh, you like basketball? Dude, you're, in a, you're, you're like in a cult, man. Somebody could be like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it is a cult. Yeah, what's the problem with it? Oh, dude, you're like in a cult. That's, that's like really bad. Why is that bad? Because cults are bad. The cult, you don't want to be in a cult. It's a bad thing. Cults cult are bad. Okay, well, let me look at the definitions. There's only one definition that really has any real bad connotation. And I say real bad only because it has that word sinister. But let's look at that word. Define that word. Define sinister. Hmm, here we go. There's only two definitions in Google. And again, I'm using Google simply because everyone can easily access that. You can look at what I'm saying. Uh, it's an adjective. And in here it's defined as giving the impression that something harmful or evil is happening or will happen. And then a sub-definition of that is evil or criminal. So giving the impression that something harmful or evil is happening or will happen. And then a sub-definition is evil or criminal. And what's interesting is if you go back in time, the word itself in Latin just means, like sinister means left. It literally means left, like the left side of something. So can you see why it's so dumb? But can you see why people were, were demonized and and belittled and like my grandmother uh, on my mom's side would tell me how when she was a kid growing up in Mississippi she would be like beaten I mean hit and stuff and yelled at and, and spanked and stuff for writing with her left hand even though she was left hand dominant because and I remember tell, her telling me this when I was a y'all small child and she said because um, it was seen as evil why is it seen as evil because the word left means the word sinister in Latin means left. So anything left is sinister. But in our, in, in, in late Middle English, sinister became to mean malicious or underhanded. Why? I wonder why. Maybe because they said like Jesus was at the right hand of the Father. So they assumed like the devil must be at the left hand. I don't know. I, I, you'd have to go into the history of it to really understand why that is, right? But in the Middle Ages, right, it says according to middle, late Middle English, it started to mean malicious or underhanded. So and maybe there's another history to it of, you know, you're, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. Like there's like a whole lot, I'm sure, to that whole point. But it's like metaphorical. So then they took it, this metaphorical aspect of the left hand is bad. And then people who write with their left hand are like, you must be possessed by Satan. Like literally, that's how dumb people are. All right, so, but what I wanted to highlight is, According to these definitions, like see how you can, it's kind of like being a lawyer. I can, I can technically say that you're in a sinister cult, uh, no matter what it is, because here, watch. Because my definition of sinister cult, is, or of cult rather, is a relatively small group of people, okay, relatively small. Um, do you like basketball? Okay, how many basketball fans are there? How, how many NBA fans are there? Here we go. This says the Facebook presence of any NBA has 38 million fans. Um, so let's just say, let's just talk about in the US, okay? 38 million fans on the NBA in the Facebook page. Now I know there's probably more people who like it than that, but let's just say it's 50 million or whatever, right? It's not everybody. I don't particularly like NBA, so I'm not one of the fans. So 38 million fans, that's not that many. I mean, I mean, would you agree that's relatively small? Um, how many Christians are there in the U.S.? How many Christians in U.S.A.? Um, 65% of Americans. So that's like over 100 million people, I, I think. Um, how many, how many, um, let's see, 
Mormons. 14.8 million. So if, and, and so 14.8 million would be like roughly 5% of the US, 4.5%, uh, I don't know. No. I didn't know that that's the 4.5 million. But if there's 350 million people, 10% would be 35 million. So half of that would be 17 million. So it's about a little bit less than 5%, let's say 4% of people in the US. Is that relatively small? I mean, uh, NBA fans, if it was, let's just say 50 million, um, that would be a seventh, right? So what's, you know, what percentage would that be? You see what I mean? It's not even 20% of the US. So you have less than 20% of NBA of people in the US, let's say are fans of NBA, about 5% of people in the US are, are um, Mormon, okay? So which one of those is relatively small? I mean, NBA fans, you could say it was relatively small, right? Okay, so, I mean, especially if you look at how many people in the world like soccer, they would think the number of NBA fans is minuscule, right? So, I'm, I'm, my argument is that NBA fans are in a cult, a sinister cult, a, an evil cult, right? A bat in the in the negative sense, right, of the word. So I want I want NBA fans to really feel bad about being in a cult. So so this and how I, here's how I can prove it, right? So it's a relatively small group. Yeah, I would say less than twenty percent is relatively small. I mean, what does relative mean? It's relative. Okay, so I'm, it's relatively small. Um, having religious beliefs or practices. Oh, hold on. Let's define religion. I gotta be careful, right? I can't I can't screw around here. Religious define. Uh, related to or believing in a religion. Um, what is a religion? A pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. Okay, so let's just go through that real quick. The belief the religion is defined as the, the belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal god or gods. Obviously, that's not what I'm talking about with the NBA. A particular system of faith and worship, mm, a pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. You might say, well, that was really... They said consumerism is the new religion. Get it? Um, have you ever seen somebody who's like real fanatical? What does fanatical mean? What does it mean to be a fan of something? Define... Fanatical. Filled with excessive and single-minded zeal, obsessively concerned with something. So when you agree there's a lot of NBA fans where it's like, I mean, um, imagine how distraught some people got about Kobe Bryant when he died, you know, and just because he was like one of their favorite basketball players versus how distraught they got over the death of Nelson Mandela. Okay. All right, so you've got this. So, so religious doesn't have to mean it's like Christianity, Buddhism. Like NBA could be a religion because it's something that gives someone is giving supreme importance to. Okay, um, enough that they went and liked the Facebook group. All right, <laughs> and they watch it every week. I mean, think about it. How often do you watch it when it's when it's on every week? I don't know if it's on Sundays because I don't know when they play, but you watch it every week, don't you? That's probably more than some people go to church. Um, and probably some people watch it more than once a week and they subscribe to the channels where it's like all the, man, all that stuff. Okay. So you have a relatively small group of people, group of people having religious beliefs or practices. So the practice in this case would be they watch the games every day. They wear the t-shirt or the, the jerseys. They've got the figurines. They've got the bumper stickers, all that stuff. I'm sure there's a large percentage. Um, so let's say 20% of less than 20% of the U S is fans of NBA, but what percentage of them are fanatical? What if it's 4%? Okay, just like the Mormons, right? Um, but let's go back to this point. So though there are religious beliefs and practices, right? In fact, think about like before the game, uh, the team goes on there, they're like, please, God, let them win. <laughs> like they really think it's a thing. Okay, regarded by others as strange. I think it's strange. I'm gonna just gonna say, in my opinion, it's strange. To, to give a shit about people throwing a ball through a fucking metal hoop and running around for an hour and getting excited about it. 
I'm not saying it's not interesting or I can't like appreciate the physical prowess or, or whatever, but it, it, it's strange to, to put that much importance on it when there's other things that I think are important, uh, more important than that. And it's a distraction from that. Um, or sinister. Well, I mean, you could say it wasn't like sinister about basketball, right? But remember, sinister just means giving the impression that something harmful or evil is happening or will happen. Just gives the impression. Um, how does something give some give an impression? Like, do, like for example, uh, Scientology. If somebody was like, "Hey, I want to invite you to this uh, Scientology meeting." And we're gonna sit around and chant Scientology things. Maybe you would be like, I don't know, man. That, that seems like something bad is gonna happen at that. It's giving me the, that kind of impression. Versus somebody else might be like, Oh no, I did. I went last week. It's really cool. Like it's fun. I, it's nothing there. It's not giving them that impression. But then you go and you visit, and you're like, Dude, this. I don't know, man. I feel like if I get into this further and I keep going, they're gonna bring me in the back room and sacrifice me or something. Like, you know, like this is giving me this weird impression. But somebody else doesn't feel that way. Because clearly, because there's lots of people who are into Scientology, I would assume, right? How many Scientologists are there? How many Scienta scientists? How many Scientologists? There's probably more Scientologists than scientists. 25,000 in this country. That's relatively small, isn't it? Right? But that's weird, right? Like, that's totally weird. Uh, famous Scientologists. Kirstie Alley, uh, let's see, Nancy Cartwright, I think I heard that name before, I don't know who that is. Tom Cruise, um, Chick Corea, that's like a jazz musician. Um, Jenna Elfman, I remember her. Dharma and Greg, yeah. Isaac Hayes, what? <laughs> I think he died, yeah, he was like the shaft guy, like, Oh yeah. Um, who else? Michael Pena? I didn't know that. He's from that movie Crashed, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Giovanni Ribisi, I remember him. That actor. John Travolta. Greta Van Susteren? I didn't know that. Did not know that. Joy Villa. I remember her. She's like that one who won the, wore the MAGA dress. But I think some of these people have left, or I don't know, maybe they still do it or whatever. Right? Let's see here. So, does it give me the impression that something bad's going to happen? Well, let's just look at it. Because um, you could say I'm, I'm, I'm just being sarcastic, but when there's an NBA game, what is everybody doing? They're all drinking beer. And... What is the likelihood that someone's going to go home from that that um, NBA game drunk and potentially crash their car and kill somebody? Like run into a van with a family of children. Rather, you know, so you see what I'm saying? Like, so I could say that it's giving me the impression because of the hyped up energy of everybody and they're all drinking and excited and they're going to go home. Like that, that could give me the impression that something bad or evil or harmful could happen. So how is it not a cult? Right. So, but the bigger picture is, so I'm just giving you an example of how I can take that word and based on my own little um, beliefs or opinions or whatever, I can label something that probably anyone else or you would be like, well, NBA is not a cult. Like, come on, that's, that's a little silly. Like, that's not a cult. Okay. But, but I agree from the perspective of it's not some sort of like negative, you know, the, the picture that people have of what they mean is a cult would not apply to that. But if I use the definitions of how the person who thinks of something as a cult, what what they're, uh, see, the thing is they're using an image. And where did you get these images? Like how many people have actually been exposed to a real, actual, harmful, evil cult? But everyone thinks they have, or everyone thinks that they know something about it. Why? Because you saw some movies, or you saw some TV shows, or you saw some news thing where some cult thing happened, or whatever, right? But 
what what you're not realizing is that you've just been given these images for a reason. So that way, when you have these images within you, anything, and think about who's the one giving you those images. If you're watching it on movies or TV or the news, those three forms of media are owned, all of them essentially by a very small group of people with very specific beliefs with very specific ideas and practices. Okay, you could even say they're a cult. And they're specifically using psychological manipulation and techniques to get you to have a certain image and feeling about a word. So they're literally using cult mind control techniques on the population to get them to have predictable responses about certain things. And why? Because they want to maintain competition, or sorry, control and reduce competition for what they have control over. So if there were, for example, a business or some, or let's say a business that could empower people to individually make a lot of money and have freedom and not be as dependent upon the system, and then spread that to others and allow them to not be as dependent on the system in the sense of like, you know, um, like if you were extremely wealthy, okay, um, and of course, I would suggest you have techno tutor for your kids, but I'm just saying, let's say you didn't know about that. Um, but if you were extremely wealthy and you had $100,000 a year just to throw away, wouldn't you just hire personal private tutors and have them tutor your kids? Right? And you might say, well, what about all the social aspects of kids going to school and stuff? If you think that, I mean, I'm sorry to say this, but you're kind of retarded because go sit in the classroom and ask yourself what real actual social interaction is happening. It's a joke. Okay. So that's just what people say because they've been brainwashed into thinking that. But the reality is that's what the elite do, right? They have private tutors, they have all this extra stuff and their kids go to schools, if they do go to schools, that your kid's not at, okay? They don't want your, their kids around your kids, all right? So my point is um, the, the groups that have a lot of power and control in this world want you to not compete with them. So they make sure that you put your kids in an education system that dumbs them down. And so if you were to, for example, start your own school where you had some really cool creative ideas, guess what's gonna happen pretty much immediately. You're gonna be labeled a cult and people are not gonna wanna come see you and let, or come even consider what you're doing unless they're like really distraught and like and they've tried everything or they've just had some experiences where they're like, I know that the system is bullshit, right? So it's like this word that's used to prevent other people from investigating something. It's also used as a way of absolving yourself of self-responsibility towards something because you don't want to investigate or you don't want to take responsibility. So why am I making this video? Because that label has been used against me and against the things that I do many, 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 many times. It doesn't phase me anymore. It used to. It used to really bother me because I, but I had to clear up that, that like I told you, that little energetic ball in there that was like, every time the word was used, I would feel it even though I knew what I was doing was not that. In other words, I knew what I was doing was from the starting point of what's best. And that's really, if you want to look at it, anything is a cult. As I just showed, anything can be defined as a cult, especially, I mean, especially, right, these religions, religious movements, political movements, and so forth, right? These are all cults. So if someone says, your religion is a cult, like, it's like, your religion is a cult. But what if people don't have a religion? People who just believe in science or whatever. That's a cult, too, right? It's a cult. They're giving importance to this, right? It's a relatively small group of people. Right, that that are actual scientists, and so you're like giving, you're worshiping them. You're saying they're always right. And if you actually study science, you realize that science admits it never knows. <laughs> it's always based on observation, and things are always open to changing. So anyone who says, "Well, how can you just, how can you just reject science?" That's like assuming that science means conclusions. Science is a method. It's a it's a way of doing something. It's an approach. So. An approach can't be right or wrong about something. It's just an approach that, based on the rules of that approach, has a certain um, piece of information to offer to consider, but in itself doesn't draw any conclusions. That's up to the person, the scientist, to draw the conclusion, or the person reading the scientist's paper to draw certain conclusions. Right? But the reality is, 
everything in our world is in fact a cult. Oh, and let's go to the word culture. Define the word culture. The arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively. Huh. But I mean, of course, the word culture is a different word than cult, right? The customs, arts, social institutions, achievements of a particular nation, uh, the attitude and behavior characteristic of a particular social group, the cultivation of plants, the cultivation of cells, like you know, plant like a cell culture, bacteria culture. Oh, let's look at the origin. Hmm, culture. Middle English goes back to the Latin medieval culturare, which goes back to colere. Where have I seen that word before? Define cult. Goes back to cultus, cult to the Latin colere. Huh. They literally come from the same word. Cult is the root of culture. And what is a culture? Like, think of like uh, the Maori tribe, or whatever, in, I think it's New Zealand, right? I'm assuming that's a very relatively small group of people that have very specific customs, very specific ways of doing things and so forth. That's a cult. We would call it a culture, not a cult. Why? Because we would think that a cult is a bad thing. But according to the definition of cult, it's not necessarily a bad thing. And in fact, so really what's the point I want you to take away is like, look at how the word is defined. Just because someone says something is a cult doesn't mean it's bad. All it really, really means most likely is that they feel like it's giving them a bad impression. Um, so what was the other point I wanted to make within this? So if you've watched this far, at least you've got this context now is people who will say that, for example, what we are doing, or what anyone's doing for that matter, is trying to create a cult-like mentality. What is a cult-like mentality? Well, a cult-like mentality. Would you say that the uh, LA Lakers, the players on that team, have a cult-like mentality? Don't you think that they think that they're the best or they wanna be the best? and they do everything together, they work together, they're like, a, they're like a, a, a school of fish, like they're like a team. They have the same purpose. <clears throat> Can you imagine like a player going, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the Lakers, but uh, I, I mean, you know, I don't really care that much about this, you know, I don't, you know, we're, we're a team, you know, we play basketball, basketball's okay, it's like just one thing, I don't really care too much about it. No, they're gonna be like, this is my life, this is all I care about. You know, there's other things too, like I'm sure they'll say family and all that stuff. But if you look at what they put the majority of their time into, it's that thing. <clears throat> so why is a cult-like mentality bad? <clears throat> Wouldn't you say that in America we have a cult-like mentality as Americans? Right? What do we value mostly is individual freedom. Do they have that same mentality in China? Do they value individual freedom? No. They value allegiance, right? They value, um, not allegiance, but uh from what i can gather it's like sort of a respect for tradition a respect for authority a respect for the government or your elders all those things like confucianism there's a whole bunch in there okay i'm not by any means an expert on china but if you just look generally at the two points you have clearly a value or at least a a submission to authority there versus in america you have and of course i know these are fluid and changing and so forth but just as an example right Typically in the U.S., we care more about individual freedom, which is why you see so much open protest about what's going on with this lockdown thing we're in right now during this coronavirus thing, right? Versus you don't really see that as much in other places. In some degrees, you do, right? But my point is, um, you know, if you go to a different country, it has a different culture. They have different ideas, different beliefs, different practices. But it's really just a different cult, Right? And it's a cult-like mentality, right? Like when everybody in England, for the most part, you know, or the UK is like getting all excited about the Queen of England giving a speech or a royal wedding or whatever, it's a cult. It's a cult-like mentality. Everyone's focusing on something, seeing it as important. When you go to school and you sit down in the classroom and everybody sits in their desks and the teacher says something and then the bell rings and everyone gets up and leaves, that's a cult-like mentality. Um, when you go to the supermarket and you pick out your groceries and you're not running around naked 
you know, throwing shit, you know, like you're, you're, you're doing the exact same thing as everybody else. That's a cult like mentality. You're following the same rules. You're doing the same system. <clears throat> so if somebody says, Oh, you, you have a, you're in this group, you have a cult like mentality. It's like, okay. That's like saying, Oh, look at you breathing oxygen over there. Huh. It's like, well, who doesn't like you kind of have to, if nobody had any mentality of following rules and placing value on things that other people place value on, our society wouldn't function, right? That'd be like if you had a group of computer programmers that were working on a program, but they all wanted to use their own programming language. That's not going to work. Just the fact that you speak English is a cult. The fact that you speak words is a cult. Look at the difference between humanity and animals. Humanity, from their perspective, is like some weird brainwashed cult where we go around talking about shit and we do stuff that's not really in the best interests of everybody, it's even the human beings, because we have these words and we communicate with each other. It's like they're like, man, these guys are like so obsessed about these particular things. <clears throat> so this idea that um, it's, it's interesting because the people who use the word cult-like mentality, they are trying to create their own cult. They're trying to get their own little following, their own, um, it's like, I can influence people by using that. And it's funny because people who will say things are cults typically are saying it because they think this group over here that they're labeling is somehow mind controlling other people. But that's precisely the purpose of the person who's labeling things as cults. They're trying to mind control people as best they can to see things their way to do something or not do something, instead of allowing a person to investigate something. And they want that feeling of being a hero, of like, I'm saving people. Or they like that feeling of being a victim and constantly being victimized by things. So you have lots of ways in which this can play out. But the thing is, and I'll just share this with you, I've never been afraid of that. I've never been afraid of being in a cult. I've never, I, because you know why? I trust myself. I trust myself that even if I make a mistake, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how to correct it, right? And um, I trust my ability to process information. So when I see something isn't actually making sense, I'll be able to discern and I'll be able to make the correction necessary. I don't, I'm not afraid of people brainwashing me. I'm not afraid of people selling me, right? I'll let salespeople come to my home because if I really like what they're selling, I'll buy it. If I, if I really see the value of it, I'm not afraid of that, right? I'm not afraid of getting swept up by emotion. Right, because I've walked a certain process for a certain period of time where I'm I've supported myself to a large degree to not let that happen anymore, and it is a process. So what I find is the people who like to run around labeling things cults and saying people have cult-like mentalities. One, okay, a couple of things. I don't know how many there are. A few things. One, they don't want to be a part of the group. They don't because they don't trust themselves, because they also don't want to be equal. They want to be able to do their own thing, which means the freedom to be less than their full potential. They don't want to be held accountable. They don't ever want to be called into question. They want to also be the leader. And it's like, since they can't be the leader of anything because they're not willing to be equal within that particular point. Like, for example, I think Apple's a cult. Blah, blah, blah. So terrible. Why? Just because you want to be Steve Jobs and you can't. Okay, so you're just going to talk shit about it. And then you get your own cult following of people who listen to you spout shit so that you have your own little following of people. And you can go on YouTube and see people who all they do on YouTube is just talk about cults and how bad they are. And there's websites, right? And many of these websites feature um, things about me, right? And talk about how what I do is a cult and so forth. But the thing is anybody who would be um, influenced by that is just because you're overly emotional. You have a low vocabulary, low processing ability. And what's so fascinating is the things that we're doing with, for example, Technitude or Destiny, is we're giving people the tools to increase their processing ability so that you can't be influenced by words like that. You can't be mind controlled. That's the whole point. And this is what I, and going back to my point about everything being a cult, I mean it. This world is a fucking weird, satanic, sinister cult where we value money over human and animal and plant life. We value profit and self-interest over life, even over the expense, even at the expense of our own life. How many people just go throughout their day doing the same thing over and over and over, trying to build memories for themselves that are the same as everybody else, 
And at the end of the day, they're going to die and they're going to have regrets. And then there's nothing to say for it, nothing to show for it. They made no difference in this world. And their life wasn't even that cool. It wasn't even that fun. They just sacrificed everything based on images and ideas they had that someone else gave them. That's really sad. But that's what everyone in our world is doing. So my advice <clears throat> would be, one, if you find yourself reacting to that word guilt, that you really slow it down and you could either watch this video again or you could uh, just go and start defining the words like go into Google to find the words and look at it really for yourself now of course I'm gonna suggest that you have techno tutor because without that you're not really gonna have the the prerequisite tools to really support yourself to remove these energetic points within that and then I'm also gonna recommend you have DIP destiny I process because within that it's gonna give you sort of the framework the, the programming language, so to speak, of how your mind and your thoughts and your feelings and emotions and all of that are working and how it's all designed. Because it's like, <clears throat> I, can, I can give you a, a computer to program with, but you don't know how to do the programming. So you need both, right? So you have TechnoTutor, and, which is that technology which allows you to get access to what's really going on in here, but then also Destiny Eye Process. And there's a free version that you can start out with, right? Um, it'll give you that vocabulary and that understanding of how does your mind actually work? So the reason why people would be afraid of being in a cult or being in a group for those reasons I talked about, but also they just don't really understand how their own mind works and they're not taking any responsibility for it. They're just afraid. And when you, when you don't apply yourself within actually changing and actually growing and really going beyond and doing what's best for all, you just get stuck and you get stagnant. And then the, cognitive dissonance sets in because it's not really what you want so you lash out at other people and you blame other people and that's the hallmark of this sort of loser mentality is always feeling like a victim and wanting to bring everyone else into your little victim mindset you know and I used to do that I used to do that all the time you know and there's a difference between seeing a situation and then doing your best to direct it and address it and confront it versus just complaining and no matter what anyone does or says you never you don't want the situation to change you just want it to remain the same because then you can keep claiming yourself in that victim status because think about it being a victim is essentially getting other people to agree with you which means you have your own little following even if it's one other person where it's like you're the center of attention, you're the focus, and it's everything about you that matters. But and and, and it's nothing that it's not, it's not that individuals are not valuable. They are valuable. That's the most supreme value is individuals because you can't experience yourself as a group. The purpose of the group is to support the individual to maximize its freedom. But the individual has to use that freedom responsibly, because as a collective, your freedom, the way you exercise it, exp uh, affects other people. But the victim mentality says, I want to stay as a victim because I don't want to take responsibility. And so what happens is because you don't take responsibility, you start getting feedback from your environment that is like judgmental in nature, critical in nature. And you don't want to face that, so you blame the environment. And then you look for people to reinforce that. So you surround yourself with people who reinforce that victim mentality. And then now you have the confirmation that you needed that you were correct. So you continue in the way you are. And so it's like you're constantly building a following and trying to gather and you will destroy anything in your path to remain a victim. But the interesting thing is the people who typically are like the biggest victims and always victimizing themselves are very powerful people, very creative people. They just haven't learned fundamentally how to give as they want to receive. They're still looking for everyone to give them something instead of saying, look, we're all in this together. Let's just give equally. And there's going to be times where we make mistakes. There's going to be times where we, as a group, if you're walking with a group in principle, okay, and here's really the fundamental difference between, let's say, Destiny and any other group out there, okay, is the principles is what's the key point. And it's not about a set of religious doctrines and rules. It's just if you look at these principles, if you examine them, and I've made videos on it, you can go to Destiny, uh, D E S T E N I dot com or dot, uh, dot .org, rather, D-E-S-T-E-N-I.org, and go look at their Declaration of Living Principles. You can't argue with it. Like, meaning, if you're being honest with yourself, it's like, 
that is the best principles for me to adopt for me to have the best life possible. And if everyone else did it, we would have collectively the best life. They're not rules. They're principles from which you live by. Like, let me give you an example of a principle. Uh, do unto others as you would have done unto you. That's not a rule. That's not a rule that you have. Like, if you don't do that, what is going to happen? You're going to create a scenario where you get fucked. You see what I mean? It's like, if you go around smacking everybody in the face, eventually you're going to get smacked. And you don't want to get smacked, so don't do that. It's just, I'm just, I'm, I'm trivializing the example on purpose, right? Because a lot of times people don't understand that point fully because of processing ability. They think that it means, therefore, I have to go out and give all my money away or be a good person or all that stuff. That in itself is not actually it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying not to be a, a good person or to not help people who are in need when you can, if that's what you want to do. But what I mean is, at the end of the day, there's a system that's deciding automatically, like unconsciously without anyone thinking about it, that some people can't get what they need. And it's nothing to do with what you do as an individual <clears throat> in the sense of there's nothing you can do just in the context of your little individual life right now, giving money to people, helping people here and there, that's going to change that system. That system has to be changed at the system level, like politics, law, etc. So what you're doing as an individual, if it's just your focus is, well, I'm just going to try to be a good person, it's never going to change that. So it's never going to change the situation where people are automatically going without, which means your actions will have no effect on that. So you're not actually giving, you're not allowing the system to give as you want to receive. Now, you may not be in a position at the moment to do anything about it. So I would suggest to focus on yourself in terms of what's preventing you from being in that situation or what is fundamentally preventing you from, if somebody else was in this that position to change that system, why you wouldn't be able to give your consent or why other people wouldn't. So you might help in the process of other people understanding why it would be okay for us to have a system that would give to everyone equally. That would be the best kind of cult. That would be the best kind of culture, a culture where we all trust each other implicitly because there's nothing to lose. We, don't, we know we can trust each other. We know automatically there's no one out there that has any reason to want to come after what I have because they also have equally. Now, that doesn't mean you have to limit what you have and everyone has to have exactly that thing, but they should at least have what they need. They should at least have food and water and shelter and things like that. And you might say, well, that's not going to stop them from wanting to steal a pair of Air Jordans or something. Yeah, but why are they placing value on that? If, if you're placing value on shit like that, either you're trying to steal it to make money with it or you just really want those Air Jordans because you're placing value on shit. Like enough that you would do something to harm somebody, you're placing value on something because you have no other purpose in life. And so if we had a system where everybody over time if everybody had what they needed, over time what you would see is people would start to open up and awaken to a higher sense of purpose. It would definitely take time. Okay, it's not like it's an overnight thing. So if we don't develop a cult-like mentality of we should all do what's best, then we're just going to continue with the cult-like mentality of every, every person for themselves. That's the cult-like mentality we have right now is self-interest instead of what's best for all. And see, when people people don't polarize, don't polarize self-interest with what's best for all. What's best for all includes what's best for you. But self-interest means looking at things in a limited way. Your interest is only on yourself, but that self is actually an idea that's been given to you. So it's like a character has been given to you. As long as you play this character, this system will run. But that character is very limited. And that's your self-interest. It's not really who you are. It's not really what you want. It's ideas that have been given to you you've never questioned. So it doesn't mean if you do what's best for all, suddenly you have to like sublimate or you don't have, you have to supplicate rather, or you have to um, suddenly, you know, grovel and all this stuff. No, you're already doing that. You're already doing that by accepting the system the way it is. Um, so this whole fear of a cult-like mentality Everyone's already doing it. And what I'm suggesting is that we adjust our mentality for ourselves. And that's the thing about what we do with Technotator Destiny. You're not, no one's doing it to you. It's already been done to you. Your parents did it to you by the, their vocabulary and what they transferred to you and their fears and emotions and so forth. And the school system did it to you. And the media did it to you. It's already been done to you. What we're talking about is you taking the individual responsibility to 
look at it for yourself. How would, what's, what starting point would I want if I could go back in time and choose it from the very beginning and rewrite all of it and change it? That's what this is about. The product, the end product of that is everybody would be in agreement, but it wouldn't be because someone's imposing a, 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 a idea on everybody. Now, that being said, if you're a part of a business or a team or something like that, there's going to have to be certain guidelines and certain systems and things that you adhere to to produce a result where everybody moves forward. So to then say, well, that's a cult-like mentality, every fucking business on the planet operates with a cult-like mentality. What do you think a factory is, right? What do you think a, a corporation is? And corporation means body, corp, corpus, corporate. It's like everyone's one body with one brain. So just, again, going back to the point, people use these words because they're trying to stop others from reaching their full potential they just want to whine and complain and not really step up. So if, if you're experiencing that towards what you're doing, and really if you're not doing Destiny or Technotutor, or you're not in Gen, I'm not really talking to you. <laughs> like, Cause you're not doing this best. You're just fucking around with whatever you're doing. And if there is something where you're like, no, no, this really is best, Cameron, it's something you haven't considered. It's obviously it's not gonna be able to contradict what I'm doing, but I'm saying if it's something where it's another piece of a puzzle or it's another aspect that really fits into what's best for all. I'm definitely open to those things. Like bring them to me. Okay. Um, I'm just saying if I'm, if I'm saying you're not in destiny or techno tutor, whatever, maybe you don't know about those things yet, which is fine. You can investigate them. Or maybe you have another thing that you can add to that, which is pretty cool. And so I'm definitely open to those things. But what I mean is when I say I'm not really talking to you is those people who just want to keep things the way they are, don't want to change anything, don't want to put any of their life into actually making a difference in this world. Those people are the ones who are trying to label what we're doing and what anything that's best is as a cult. And that's the problem, is it's their own lack of ability with vocabulary and it's their own inner reactions and their own lack of self-responsibility that's to blame. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to, I don't know who's on here, so does anybody have a question? I'm just going to wait for a moment and see if anybody has a question for me. Otherwise, I'll end the video. Because um, I probably will upload this on YouTube as well. Anybody have any questions? I, it's like this new interface on, on Facebook Live, so I can't really even see who's watching right now. At least I haven't, I haven't investigated how to do that yet. So let's see here. Streaming. I'll just leave it like that. And um, feel free, if, you, if you're watching this on the replay, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, to leave a comment and give your perspective or any questions that you might have for me, because I can always answer in the comments, or I can make another video and share that. All right, everybody, we'll leave it at that. Have a good one.